what is the anointing upon my God this is the endowment with power this is what we call the hand of God with respect to the engracing that comes upon a believer the anointing within is the endowment with power for service for service you're writing on the line for service endowment with power from on high for service Luke 24 49 this is the engracing that equips the saints for extraordinary exploits and behold I send the promise of my father upon you say upon you not just within you Jesus had earlier on spoken to them about the spirit who was with them and would be in them now he's saying there is a promise that will come upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high are we together Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and that power will make you witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him Isaiah 61 please give us verse 1 the spirit of the Lord is upon me say upon me one more time say upon me when it is upon it is for service when it is upon it is to empower you to be a witness it is for extraordinary exploits now let me say this very quickly the greatest hindrance we're discussing the anointing upon now the greatest hindrance to the anointing upon is the state of your heart the greatest hindrance when you find a believer who does not seem to access this engracing it looks like the hand of God is far from resting on your life and on your head it is usually the heart condition I think the greatest dealing in my life with the Holy Spirit is in this area the heart condition I have learned by experience no matter what you do right in this life if your heart is wrong it cancels it second chronicles 25 1 and verse 2 let me show you a scripture that i plead you never forget for the rest of your life second chronicles amaziah was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 20 and 9 years in jerusalem and his mother's name was jehoadam of jerusalem oh, what's this let's read verse 2 together ready one to read and he did that which was right in the sight of the lord but not with a perfect heart look at this kind of scripture how do you do what is right in the sight of the lord your doing was not wrong your service was accurate as required but the problem was your heart your preaching can be right your singing can be right your giving can be right and yet it will not attract the hand of God because the state of your heart vetoes your fasting it vetoes your prayer it vetoes your Bible study it vetoes the energy that is dissipated in the house of God isn't it amazing the state of a man's heart the greatest requirement the greatest determinant of the manifestation of the hand of God is someone learning now in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9 and 10 the emphasis is verse 10 Jeremiah 17 9 and 10 the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it he says I the Lord watch this I search the heart I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings 
So you can be praying, Lord, open doors for me. I want you to grant me the kind of grace you have given Pastor Nathaniel Bassi. I want you to give me Benny Hinn's anointing. I want you to give me late Idahosa's anointing. I want you to grant me access to late Apostle Babalola's anointing. And what if somebody should watch you from a distance, you say, What zeal and passion? Oh God, help this man. And yet God says, I know what I'm seeing. Whereas your mouth is saying this, your heart is saying, there has to be someone famous and I'm that person. Do you know that your heart also has a voice? The Bible says, say not in your heart. There is a voice and God hears both. The one we are hearing is the one we can judge you by. But there is an inner voice. Who is God speaking to tonight? Hallelujah. The inner voice. The state of your heart and i did teach you yesterday the moment there is any agenda in your heart aside from the revelation and the glorification of jesus you are already found wanting oh king you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting god weighs men and when he finds you wanting he helps you by pruning you there are many things that you call delay that is not delay it is the mercy of God keeping you and pruning you. Are we together now? So that you will not abort destiny. It is God that knows the heart of men. Now, there are times that God can be keeping men at certain levels and you may want to help them out of compassion. And God will tell you, just remain. I know what I'm doing. God, what is it about a job that you cannot give this zealous, wonderful sister? God says, I love her more than you. You'd even die for her as much as you love her. If you are to hang on the cross for her, you will not hang on the cross for her. So I know what I'm doing. Who would ever know that in that young boy called David was a murderer? If you saw David as a young boy, he would be the kind of child every parent would want. Yet in that young boy, the murderer did not come when he was in, in the throne. The murderer manifested when he was there. Only God knows how many versions of us are in us. Did you hear what I said? Only God knows. How many versions of us? I think it was Dr. Modok who wrote a song, God loves every one of me. But God cannot use every one of you. <clears throat> there is a version of you that needs to die. There is a version of you that needs to die. Both Cain and Abel came out of the same womb. And the Bible uses them to describe the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh. Paul began to vent his frustration in Romans chapter 7. He says, the things that I desire to do, I do not find myself doing them. And the things I don't want to do, that is what I find. This is the apostle himself, oh, and he, was, he did not hide it. He said, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Then chapter 8 verse 1 now says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit he says for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus hath set me free from the law of sin and death is someone learning so the anointing upon depends on the state of your heart but very quickly so that we get into the impartation there are three platforms for receiving the anointing there are three platforms for accessing the hand of god and i want you to please pay attention now number one how do i experience the hand of god what we call the power upon the anointing upon how do i experience it in my life and your life number one a direct encounter with the spirit of power micah chapter 3 and verse 8 a direct encounter the believer can have a direct encounter with the spirit of power he says but truly i am full of power by the spirit of the lord and of judgment and of might i am full of power by the spirit of the lord is someone learning there is something called the spirit of power that should be second timothy 1 verse 7 god has not given us the spirit of fear give it to us please second timothy 1 7 yes but the spirit of power 
the spirit of love and of a sound mind a sound mind is what you call wisdom are we together now god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power there is what there is a manifestation of the holy spirit in the life of the believer called the spirit of power the spirit of power when you access the spirit of power your life will be turned around and you see this access can be enhanced by spiritual activities like prayer spiritual activities like fasting these two particularly they are directly connected to your encountering the spirit of power prayer and fasting prayer and fasting prayer and fasting luke chapter 4 1 2 and 14 is god speaking to someone luke chapter 4 1 2 and 14 jesus was full of the holy ghost and returned from jordan and was led of the spirit into the wilderness verse 4 being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days he did eat nothing and when they were ended afterwards he was hungry and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about the spirit of power tonight the hand of god as the spirit of power is moving across this place i am not sure it is looking for everyone because i don't know how many people are truly ready but i know one thing for sure that there is somebody at this oasis conference that in the name of jesus the spirit of power it will just come and rest upon you hallelujah it is not that it will come and visit you the psalmist said now as was it solomon now he said now arise O lord come to your resting place that you have made your life his resting place the spirit of power i just sense in my spirit this iba song personat iba ho iba that's what I'm hearing in my spirit. Sing it for me, my dear people. If I'm you, I'll be blessed in the spirit for one minute, opening, preparing your heart for an encounter with the spirit of power. Blessed are thou, root of Jesus. Blessed are thou, son of Jesus. Blessed are thou, son of Jesus. Blessed are thou, root of Jesus. You are eminent.
Disconnect from this atmosphere. Luke chapter 1, 34 and 35. The spirit of power. I'm showing you the first way that people encounter the hand of God. Then said Mary to the angel, How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? How shall I rise? How shall ministry work? How shall the supernatural happen? The answer is in verse 35. Watch this. And the angel answered and said to Mary, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. We are going to sing this song just one more time. Then I go to number two and three. The waters is being stirred. So number one, the first way we access the power of God is an encounter with the spirit of power. Number two, very quickly, the second way we access the power of God is through the understanding of the word, the understanding of scripture. There is a dimension of the power of God that comes in the life and upon a believer on the strength of the knowledge of scripture we read yesterday in habakkuk chapter 3 3 and 4 my god i just had a loud shout in the spirit this is this is no 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 no. i'm not just talking of a mechanical shout there is there is an anointing i just like a loud shout someone shouting by the spirit of god i, I, I just saw like a rope just caught just like that. Please help them. Hallelujah. Ah, there is there is a rain that is falling from this place. Rain. rain. The Bible tells us that in that sunlight splendor is the hiding place of his power in his light is the hiding place of his power when god wants to introduce you to his hand he wants his hand to rest upon you he will open you up to scripture acts chapter 20 and verse 32 and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace watch this which is able to build you up Build you up, build you up, build you up. I'm seeing four people. Speed is coming to you. Speed. There is a mighty anointing. Speed is coming to you. Speed is coming to you. Speed is coming to you. Hallelujah. Just help them. We're about to pray. My God, my God, my God. My God, speed. Alas, alema sabaras kubash, krate gebeles sabarus yata. Speed. It will not be like yesterday. No, it will not be like yesterday. Not in ministry. Not in business. Not in career. The hand of the Lord comes upon men to give them speed. Who is God speaking to? The hand of the Lord comes upon men to give them speed. To give them speed.